if you really struggle with being highly emotionally reactive, even to seemingly small things, or you don't know how to regulate big emotions when they come up, then this talk is going to be for you. We're going to talk about becoming more emotionally mature, and I'm going to give you some key skills to learn how to do that. Now, just as an aside, when we talk about being emotionally immature versus being emotionally mature, this isn't a judgment of character or your value or worth as a human being. So just take note of that your level of emotional maturity only has to do with the skills you were taught, usually at a younger age, the skills you were taught to be able to manage your emotions, to be able to understand your emotions, to be able to work with and through big emotions when they came up. And if you didn't learn that, or if you didn't learn that very much, then you're going to be kind of stuck at that level of emotional regulation development or emotional regulation ability that you kind of got stuck at at that younger age and that stuckness kind of carried you through and you're still probably at a lot of those same levels of emotional maturity if you were never taught anything any different and if you haven't really done this work yet as an adult to develop your emotional maturity, then you're just going to be kind of stuck in that younger age, which is just why we call it immaturity. So this isn't, again, an evaluation of your worth um, or value as a human being. It just has to do with what you learned along the way. And if you weren't taught it, if you weren't modeled it, if you weren't shown it, then you can't really blame yourself for not knowing how to do it, right? It would be like, if you didn't know how to ride a bike as an adult, you wouldn't blame yourself for being so stupid for not being able to ride a bike. It was because you weren't taught how to do it. You were never taught how to ride a bike. Maybe for a lot of us, we were taught as children how to ride bikes. But if you weren't taught how to ride a bike as an adult, and then all of a sudden, or as a child, and then as an adult, you got on a bike and like fell over immediately, you wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I can't do anything, right? I'm such a loser, now you just be like, oh, I haven't learned how to do it yet, which is why I'm falling and scraping up my knees when I try. So this is why many among us, if we never learned how to be more emotionally mature, never really learned how to understand what to do with our emotions when they come up, when big emotions come up, and we only learned how to either act out, to react, to turn outwards and against other people in our emotional reactions or to turn inward against ourselves when big emotions come up. If that's the only thing we are ever taught or ever shown, then that's just what we're going to do. So developing emotional maturity is a skill to be learned like any other skill. And I'm going to get you started on that here today. You ready? If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below if you are back again. It is always good to have you. Special shout out to my shifters. I know many of you are here watching this and I just want to say hi to you and come and bring discussion from this talk into our Shift Society community. And we can talk more about this and get deeper into discussion. If you're like, Julia, what's the Shift Society? That is my membership community where we are taking this work deeper and you are given master classes and lessons um, and step-by-step -step processes to learn specifically how to manage your mind and emotions, no matter, no matter whoever or whatever is going around you, on around you so you can feel more calm, confident, and grounded every single day. You can get more information about the Shift Society in the description below. Um, if you haven't already, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, sorry, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Always helpful getting these free talks out into the ears and minds and hearts of more people. Um, either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a therapist, a researcher, a coach, the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, and I help heart-centered go-getters break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And developing our emotional maturity isn't, and we're not, this isn't a moral thing. It doesn't make you a better person to become more emotionally mature. mature. It just makes you feel better. You're not less of a person if you struggle with any of these things. Um, if you struggle with your emotional maturity, not any less of a person. It, this isn't about making you a better, more valuable person. This is just about 
making you feel better, making you feel more equipped to be able to handle life in ways that feel better, where you feel more confident and secure and empowered and less like uh, an emotional um, roller coaster. You just feel more even and uh, yeah, just more in charge of yourself and your life. So let's talk about these. Let's talk about how to start becoming more emotionally mature. Now, my last talk that you could go back and watch first is about how to tell if you're struggling with your emotional maturity. And these uh, things I'm going to talk about today are related to what we talked about last time or in the last talk. So you can go back and watch that one. Um, that's just about evaluating where you're at in your level of emotional maturity so you know what to start working on. That's it. Not evaluating your worth as a person, just evaluating where you're at so you know what to work on. Now, these ones I'm going to talk about, like I said, are related to that. So it might be helpful to go back and watch that, but you will still get something out of it by just watching this here today. So in the last one, we did talk about one sign of emotional immaturity is being highly defensive, right? So getting really offended easily and then becoming defensive around that. So how we counteract that with more emotional maturity, how do we develop our emotional maturity around this one is to start getting curious. If you're a shifter, you know right now that's one of our favorite words in the shift society. When something is coming up, our first step is to get curious. What's coming up for me right now? Why did this offend me? What am I making this mean? Why am I reacting to this in this way? So taking a step back and getting curious and looking at and being like, okay, so I could get defensive right now, or I could take a step back and ask myself if I need to, and if there is something that I need to be defending, or if it's just shame or ego that's getting in the way right now that's causing me to have this reaction. So I'll give you an example of this. Many of you know I recently moved and living in this lovely new space that I love so much and I'm so grateful to be living here and I love, I just, I love, I love where I live and I spent time and energy and effort um, setting my place up to be really warm, really inviting, really comfortable, a space that I really wanted to be in and I put a lot of time and energy and effort and money into it. And I'm really happy with this space and I'm really proud of it. Now, recently I had some family members, this was a few months ago, shortly after I'd moved in, I had some family members come over to visit for the first time and had them over for some coffee in the afternoon, had a nice little visit. And then before they left, one of these people said, well, it's nothing fancy, but it's not bad. And immediately I had this big emotional reaction and I was offended. And my temptation was to get defensive and to get upset and to have words to say like, that's so rude or like, you know, that's so um, inconsiderate or I'll put so much into this and that's the best that you can do. Like this was kind of going through my head. But then I took a step back and I was like, Julia, why are you getting offended? And why do you feel the need to defend something that you really like? Does someone else have to approve of whatever it is that's important to you in order for you to continue to value it or to have your own thoughts and opinions about it? Does this person's thoughts and opinions have to match yours in order to feel okay? And in that moment, I realized no. They are allowed to have whatever thoughts they want to have about my place. I just have to make sure I am clear on my own thoughts and I love this place. And I think for me, it is fancy and I think that it is great. And I think that it's beautiful. And this person can think, you know what? It's nothing fancy, but it's not half bad. And they're allowed to have their thoughts. I am allowed to have my thoughts and they don't have to be the same. And they're not doing anything wrong and I'm not doing anything wrong. Now you might think, well, the person, you know, is kind of a little bit, you know, not super supportive or they could have been more encouraging and yeah, maybe they could have. And sure, that would have been nice, but is it necessary? Is it necessary for that person to have the same thoughts as I have the same perspectives, the same ideas, the same desires, the same preferences? 
Is it necessary for them to have all of those same things as me in order for me to feel okay? In order for me to not feel offended? In order for me to not feel then defensive? And the answer is no. They can have their thoughts. I can have mine. There's nothing to defend. The next one, the next way to build our emotional maturity is to get okay with not being right. And I know this is a hard one for many of us, especially when it's things that you care about. But often the funny thing is, is that we will like stick our stake in the ground about things that aren't even that important because we don't want to be proven wrong, because we don't want someone to have the upper hand, because we don't want someone else to like one up us in some way. And so we're like, you cannot be right. I have to be right. And, you know, we get on sort of this like high ground instead of asking ourselves, why do I need to be right? I don't get a medal or a cookie if I am, if everyone and everything in the universe agrees on my idea, my perspective, my view, I don't get a medal or a cookie. And so why would I waste my energy trying to prove that I'm right when I could just sit back and have my own idea or opinion and be curious about someone else's? Now, it doesn't mean that I have to agree but I do need to understand a part of emotional maturity is understanding that everybody has their own ideas and perspectives and perceptions, and they have kind of a reason behind it. Even things that you're like, how could you have that political view? Or how could you, you know, believe or think that that person is a good person? Or how could you even like them? Or how could you, how could you like, you know, they make, you, you say they make the best cinnamon buns. Well, I don't think those cinnamon buns are very good at all. I've had way better ones and you're wrong, right? Like we get so stuck on even like silly little things instead of being like, they probably have their reasons for their opinions or perspectives and I don't have to agree with them, but I don't have to make them agree with me. What would that be like if you just release people to have their own perspective and ideas? And if you want to share yours, and if you are interested in trying to kind of sway them more into your way of thinking because you think it's more healthy or helpful or productive, then great, have a discussion, right? Have a back and forth without trying to force them into thinking that you are right because it's just human nature. The more we feel forced or controlled, the more we get defensive, the more we hold back, the more resistant we become. And so, taking some time to try to understand where someone else is coming from. Why do they have the perspective they have? Why do they have the perception they have? What situations, circumstances, or teachings, or learnings, or information have they been exposed to that have brought up this idea or perspective that they have, that, that have built that? So working on being curious again. Trying to listen and understand doesn't mean you have to agree, but it also means that you don't have to be right. The next way to build your emotional maturity, and this is a big one for all of us, is to learn how to breathe. And you're probably like, Julia, I know how to breathe. I breathe all day, every day. My lungs just do it. That's why I'm alive. If I didn't know how to breathe, I wouldn't be here. And you're right except for when you are emotionally triggered. When you are in emotional distress, your natural uh, physiological response in your body is going to be to make your breath more, um, more shallow, more quick and shallow, right? And it's gonna make all the blood from your brain, all your rational kind of logical thinking and conscious thinking leave your brain and go to your limbs because you're in threat mode, you're in fight or flight or freeze mode. And so your body is preparing for that and the kind of blood is leaving your brain, the oxygen in a lot of ways is leaving your brain as well with that blood. So you're not thinking as clearly, which is why we get reactive and being reactive is one of the key signs of emotional immaturity. So building emotional maturity as simple as it sounds, really does start with the breath. Really starts with slowing down our breath because when we slow down our breath, we, slow, we start to slow down our, our fight or flight response, right? Like our heart is pounding, we're breathing shallow, we're getting ready to protect ourselves. 
usually in situations that we actually don't need protection. We're not like being chased by a lion. Chances are you're not being chased by a lion when you're having um, a conflict with someone, when someone says or does something that brings up an, a reaction in you, but your body is responding like there is a threat. It's not a real threat. It's an imagined threat. And so taking charge of yourself, of your emotions by breathing first, getting out of that fight or flight response and back into breathing, which brings the oxygen back up into your brain, which brings the blood back in, up into your core, which regulates your nervous system so that you can be feeling more calm and more grounded and able to access your cortex, your cerebral cortex in your brain, which is your logical, rational part of your brain. Because when you're in defensive mode, when you're in triggered mode, your, your emotional center of your brain, your amygdala is being taken over and you can't think, right? This is why you're like, ah, I'm so, I'm so overwhelmed or I'm so stressed or I'm so upset, I can't think. And you're right, you can't. And so the breath is gonna be what brings you back into your conscious self in that moment. So learning how to breathe, taking low, or sorry, slow, long, deep diaphragmatic breaths where you're putting your hands, if you can see, putting your hands like on your ribs on each side and expanding your ribs. And that is going to be what helps to calm you down so that you can take a step back and breathe and regulate and then decide consciously how you want to think about this circumstance and what you want to do about this situation. Becoming more responsive instead of instantly reactive is one of the keys to building our emotional maturity. The next one um, is to try and work on understanding multiple realities. So, so often we see the world not as it is, but we see the world from where we are. And we get so set on thinking this is the right way, this is the only way, this is the way it needs to be, this is the way it has to be, this is the best Right? Instead of understanding that other people have completely different ways of seeing things or doing things or understanding things that they also believe to be true, that their way is the right way, the best way, the only way. And so emotional maturity comes back to taking a step back and being like, again, like we talked about before, considering that someone else could have another perspective based on their experience, their exposure, their learning, where they brought up, were brought up, how they were brought up that they all, we all have these, these lives that have formed our way of thinking. And that's why we think the way we think now because of the things that we were exposed to, that we experienced, that we learned, that we observed, that we absorbed along the way for better or for worse. And so emotional maturity means that we take a step back and we understand that other people can have other perspectives. Other people can have other experiences. Other people are going to have other thoughts, other feelings, other reactions to things. And so as hard as it can be, especially in the moment when you're feeling worked up, when you're feeling fired up, someone is trying to tell you that you're wrong and they're right, right? Being able to take a step back and say, okay, I wonder why they think that they're so right. And I wonder why they think that I'm so wrong. And can I take a step back and just consider that they have information or an idea or a perspective that has led them to believe that they are right. Just like in this moment, I have the same thing that has led me to believe that I am right. And this is a huge one for working on not taking things personally. So if you think that people are always directing things against you, doing things intentionally to hurt you, that you are a victim or that people are always against you, then you are going to take things personally. But if you can take a step back and understand that most people are not doing things intentionally against other people, they are doing things for themselves. And I've personally had this happen to me before where I, I, didn't, um, I, I didn't respond to an email in a kind of timely way that this person was expecting me to respond to it. And they made that mean that they weren't important right? That, that, um, that I didn't value them, that I didn't value their time, that I should have known that this was going to offend them, that they had, you know, issues with like previous abandonment or rejection. And they, they thought that I should have known that this would have triggered that. And the thing is, I didn't, 
because I hadn't had a chance to get back to the email yet because I was doing all these other things that I needed to get done. And because I didn't understand that their email or the topic of their email was this urgent to them, I didn't see it as urgent for me to get back to them. So their emergency, even though it wasn't framed as an emergency, obviously if they're like, this is an emergency, I am in crisis, then I would have been like, okay, you know, got to respond to this, but it didn't come across to me that way at all. So their emergency wasn't my emergency. And I didn't understand that their emergency was an emergency. So I didn't treat it as such, which caused them to think that I was having thoughts that I wasn't having. Right. And so often really looking at this, like, could it be that someone is having a different thought other than what we think they are having? Could it be That if someone doesn't text you back immediately, it's not because that, you know, no one cares about you and no one has time for you, that you're not important, right? If you weren't given the top assignment at your job, could it be that it's not because you're a worthless human being? Right? That maybe somebody else has some skills that you haven't developed yet, or maybe they were in the right place at the right time, you know, and they just happened to be there and your boss offered it to them because it was just a thing of proximity or because your boss thought you already had enough on your plate and didn't want to load you up with more. Could it be these other things? So really looking at trying to understand that there are multiple realities going on at the same time. And this helps so much with us not taking things personally, not getting so offended, not making everything that somebody else does a about us because more often than not it isn't now that doesn't mean you're not allowed to ever let anything bother you but it's going to change how you approach it if you're going in being like hey I took it this way this is my thoughts about it this is what was going on for me instead of saying you did this you're mean, you're cruel, you're um, vindictive, you're manipulative I mean I'm not saying that people never are But even when they are going in with guns blazing is typically not going to be the thing that resolves the issue. So being able to manage our mind, being able to consider that people have their own reasons for doing things and those reasons aren't directly against our, you know, trying to undermine our value as human beings is going to help us be able to react or sort of respond to things, handle things and approach things in in an emotionally mature way that is likely going to get us a better result. The next thing to do to start working on becoming more emotionally mature is to develop your healthy self-talk. Now, what this looks like is really just being able to notice how you talk to and about yourself when you're up against a wall, when things are hard, when you make a mistake, when you fail. We're actually right now, the time I'm recording this, we're in the middle of our 14 day no self-criticism challenge in the Shift Society, where our, as a whole community, we are working on how we talk to and about ourselves and becoming aware of how often we throw ourselves under the buses, under the bus where we are hard on ourselves, where we beat ourselves up. We, we, we shame ourselves for seemingly small things. We're like, you know, you drop, you drop and break a glass and you're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm such a klutz. Instead of being like, oh, maybe I was going too quickly and I wasn't paying close enough attention and then this happened. Or, oh, random accidents happen, right? Without it being a va- an evaluation of my worth as a human being where we beat ourselves up so quickly if we ever have a misstep or a mistake, we have a setback or a failure, we are so quick to beat ourselves up. But what would it be like if we were there for ourselves no matter what? If even in the midst of failure, we were able to catch instead of kick ourselves when we fell? What would it be like if when you made a mistake, you were able to identify the mistake and do what you needed to do to rectify the mistake without making it mean that you are a mistake? So going into continuous self-blaming, self-criticism, self-shaming is a sign of emotional maturity or emotional immaturity. Being able to be kind, gracious, compassionate, responsible with yourself is emotional maturity.
So it doesn't mean that every time you make a mistake, you just let, let yourself off your hook. You're like, oh, well, everyone makes mistakes. No big deal. Whoops. I like screamed and yelled at my partner. Oh, well, you know, it's bound to happen sometimes. No, that's not, that's avoiding responsibility. That's also not emotionally mature because you're not taking responsibility for what you did, but you can take responsibility for your mistakes or for your unhealthy or unhelpful behavior without shaming yourself in the process. You can because again, shaming is about avoiding responsibility because then you're so sh stuck in feeling so terrible about yourself that you're not actually doing something to learn from it, to grow from it, to seek amends from it or make it right. So that's what it means to take responsibility for it. And that is a huge sign of emotional maturity when we take responsible for the things that we are responsible for. Another sign of emotional maturity is learning how to ask for what you want or what you need in a clean, clear, and classy way. Many of us grew up in homes that there was a lot of either aggressive or passive aggressive communication. There was a lot of blaming, there was silent treatmenting, there was avoidance, there was blowing up, there was brushing off, but there wasn't just sort of this honest and clear communication where someone was able to own their own experience and say, Hey, that hurt my feelings or Hey, I didn't like that or Hey, let's work on this or Hey, that's not okay with me. This is what I'd like to see instead. What do you think? Where well, we just never learned how to own our own experience and then for, to ask for what we needed without blaming or berating or criticizing someone else or blaming, uh, criticizing or berating ourselves for having those needs in the first place or feeling bad and angry that other people weren't meeting the needs that they may not have even known that we had, right? And that's where passive aggressive behavior often comes up when we're secretly bitter and angry at someone for not meeting a need that they weren't even aware that we had in the first place. And so learning how to communicate in a clear, clean, and classy way. If this is something you want to work on, your communication, becoming a rock star communicator, being able to show up and say what you want, think, need, and feel in a way that is kind, but then also um, compels people to listen and respect that. Finding your voice and using your voice in an effective way is a skill, and I teach you how to do that in my workshop, Speak and Feel Heard. You can get more info about Speak and Feel Heard in the description below. It's my masterclass workshop on assertive and effective communication. Where are you at? If you're like, oh boy, Julia, I've got a lot to work on. Don't worry, you are not alone. <laughs> We all do. And there is no destination, which is the good news. So we take a little bit, we take one thing and we focus on that. And you're like, you know what? That's what I'm going to work on. That's one thing that I really want to focus on. So take one thing and let me know in the comment section below. What's one thing from this talk today that you're like, I'm not going to overwhelm myself with everything I need to work on because that's not going to be helpful. You're just going to, your brain's going to get, you know, overloaded and you're going to shut down and you're not going to do anything instead of just letting yourself take it small, one step at a time, one thing, start becoming more aware of that, start working on that and go from there. It's not go big or go home. It's go sl small to moderate and make it doable and sustainable. Let me know what that's going to be in the comment section below. Um, get on the wait list for the shift society, get my workshop. In the meantime, while you wait for the shift society to open up, get a head start on building your emotional maturity by grabbing my masterclass on effective and assertive communication, speak and feel heard, share what you got from this talk in the comment section below. And as always, so good to have you here. Be good to yourselves. Be good to those around you. Till next time, take good care.